So that's Sifra, super intelligent female robot automation. And for those of you that don't watch Bollywood movies, she's an AI-powered girlfriend. What if I told you that one day this could be a reality, and you could create your own customized friends just the way you want them using AI? What qualities would they have? Would they be someone who knows the right thing to say to provide you encouragement? Or would they be someone who shares your passion and hobbies, always ready for an adventure? Or would they be someone who understands your silence and knows when to give you space? Before we go further, let's first see what empathy means. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. It's what helps us form deep emotional connects with the people around us. Our empathy is rooted in our own lived experience and intuition. When we empathize with someone, we, uh, it comes from our own personal understanding. In the sense that when you comfort someone who's going through a tough time or when you celebrate someone's phenomenal achievement, you're engaging in empathy. So how do we as humans express empathy through emotional cues? These are facial expressions, body languages, tones. And for example, a smiling face suggests that someone's happy. A harsh tone suggests that they're upset. A hug is a sign of friendliness and comfort. And a scowl suggests anger and annoyance. Once we have the ability to empathize with someone, we also now possess EQ, which is how well you can identify and empathize with someone's emotions and how appropriately you respond. Our EQ is dependent as well on our own personal intuition and lived experiences. In fact, many children in the pandemic did not develop the same sense of EQ as others, primarily because they did not have as many human interactions, and thus never practiced understanding and analyzing emotions or responding to them. So how is technology able to mimic this process? And how are we able to create that concept of artificial empathy? This is through three main technological tools that I'd like to talk about today natural language processing, image processing, and audio analysis. All three are AI algorithms that are data-driven, in the sense that we as humans provide multiple data points in large volume, labeling each with an emotion, like happy, sad, angry, frustrated, relieved, and so on. And the AI models use mathematical algorithms to find common patterns in the way we express emotion. Then, when we give these AI models a random data point, they're able to automatically understand the emotion being expressed. And let me explain with a few examples. So natural language processing is one such AI model where it's able to take a phrase or sentence and automatically understand the meaning that is being expressed through it by breaking it down into smaller components. So in this particular phrase, let's assume I say something like, oh no, I did horribly on my math test. And an AI model is able to correctly pick up that the phrase, oh no, and that word horribly seem to imply that I'm upset. Similarly, image processing is where <laughs> is where an AI model takes an image, breaks it down into smaller individual components, and is able to analyze the emotion being expressed. So in this case, we see someone's lips being pursed, their hands on their head, and they're leaning forward. And you might guess that they're probably upset. And lastly, audio analysis is where an AI model is able to pick up in changes in volume of speech, um, the speed at which they're talking, and other inflections in tone, such that an AI model can infer what emotion they're expressing and what tone they're speaking in, whether they're speaking happily, angrily, fearfully, and so on. By combining all these three AI models, we can create a composite system that can understand emotion and respond appropriately. And this is what we can call artificial computer-created empathy. But now if you noticed, in all the previous slides, the emotions expressed were fairly pronounced. We're usually not that visibly happy or sad. In reality, our emotions are a lot more subtle, layered, nuanced, and complex. So to what extent is AI able to pick up on those subtle differences and the underlying implications of our different facial expressions, body languages, and tones? Going back to that math test example, let's assume I say something like, oh no, I did horribly on my math test. A well-trained AI model picks up on oh no and horribly to conclude that I'm upset, responding with something like, I'm sorry to hear that. Would you like some help with the next one? This might seem like a fairly empathetic response, but what if the situation is a bit more complex? What if I say something like, oh no, I did horribly on my math test, but thank God it's over. And here, not only should the AI model pick up on that emotion of upset through the words, oh no, and horribly, but it should also pick up on a sense of relief through, thank God. Can the AI model appropriately figure out this contradictory mixed nature of the emotion being expressed and respond with something appropriate? Maybe it's okay to feel disappointed, but it's great that you're looking on the bright side. Let's take an example of more subtle emotions. Sorry. 
Uh, let's assume I spent the entire weekend building this DIY bookshelf, but it leans precariously to one side, and I can't really store any books in it. And I say something to the AI model like, well, it's a masterpiece, isn't it? With that wry smile and a hint of sarcasm. And the AI model is unable to pick up on those subtle changes in emotion, especially tone and facial expression. And it might respond with something like, I love it. Why don't you do this more often? <laughs> and this is obviously wrong. The AI model was not able to correctly empathize with me because it did not understand the subtle change in tone and facial expression that I expressed. Let's take another example of more complex emotions. Let's assume I say something like, oh, great, another meeting, just what I needed. And again, the AI model correctly identifies that the words great and needed indicate happy. It responds with something like, fantastic, hope it goes well. Huh? Again, we see another glaring flaw in the way artificial empathy works. It doesn't possess inherent contextual awareness that we as humans do. We know that meetings are generally a, are generally a cause for frustration. AI models don't know that. And the best way to improve these AI models is by providing more data to them. As humans, we are able to understand the world around us because we have so much data from our lived experiences. And the more data we throw at an AI model, the more it knows about the world around it. We tell the AI model that that phrase, oh no, means upset, and a smile means happy. The secret to artificial empathy ever becoming genuine and authentic is how good of a training data set can we create. With enough of these complex, mixed, subtle emotions, such that an AI model is able to accurately understand all of them. So how far have we come today to building this technology? Well, Pepper by SoftBank Robotics is one such emotionally intelligent robot out there. And what makes it special is that it has, it has an array of sensors, cameras, and microphones that can accurately understand and analyze the emotion that you're expressing. Accordingly, it generates a response. It also has this unique capability where it can recognize and remember, your fa remember faces. And that makes the empathy all the better. But at the same time, Pepper has this really awkward two and a half second delay between the time you speak to it and it responds back to you. And it takes that time to process the data that's been provided. Not just that, Pepper's natural language processing, image processing, and audio analysis algorithms just aren't good enough yet at being able to understand emotions, especially those subtle, nuanced, complex ones that require contextual awareness. And similarly, MIT has developed Kismet, and Hanson Robotics has developed Sophia, both of which are also emotionally intelligent robots, but suffer from similar issues. Their AI algorithms also just aren't good enough yet. But lately, advances in generative AI that's very conversational, like ChatGPT, give us a lot more optimism that we can have artificial empathy be a reality soon. We can create that training data set that is so powerful uh, and has the right kinds of data in it, such that AI models are able to learn how to, how to understand and analyze human emotions. So let's assume that we do have this artificial empathy model ready, and it's, it's able to accurately understand our emotion and respond very well to. Can we then consider this AI models' emotions to be truly real? The most obvious argument is that AI doesn't experience emotions directly. It simply processes data and produces output. It's a collection of vast data sets, sophisticated algorithms, and patterns learned from human, uh, human interaction. To, to feel real human emotions, you need to have consciousness, self-awareness, and subjective experiences, none of which AI possesses. You, think of, you can think of emotions as not just being responses to stimuli, but like I said, being rooted in our lived experiences and intuition. And so, does it really matter, though, if AI models feel or don't feel emotions, and if robots genuinely understand your empathy or not? If they're able to respond in a way that still shows that they care, and, you're, and you feel comforted and satisfied by their responses, could that not consider their empathy to be real, at least in a functional sense? And after all, AI's empathy might not be too different from a, from a human's empathy. And it might actually be better if we give it enough good data. And so coming back to the question I posed in the beginning, can robots have emotions? The answer to that question is fairly complex. But as technology continues to advance, we can be more and more optimistic that the lines between real and artificial empathy will blur. And so the question we must ask ourselves is not whether robots can have emotions, but whether we want them to. And what does that empathy, uh, and, and what does robots having emotions mean for human interactions on a day-to-day -day basis? On one hand, it could be fairly positive. You could have companion robots for mental health patients, isolated individuals, and senior citizens. You could also have customer support and tech support robots that are fairly empathetic, more so than today's customer support. But at the same time, there are risks. Could we become so reliant on emotions, uh, on, on algorithms and machines for our emotional needs, and there's no real value for, you, for human interaction anymore and genuine human connects? 
What happens to the construct of friends? And what about life partners? Thank you.